Today I want to talk to you about Logic 10.5. This update is absolutely outstanding. They might as well call it Logic 11. Let's go ahead and look at some of the new features. We've got over 2,500 new loops. We've got something new called a live loop starter grid. So for those of you that do not know how to use the live loop section, these are templates that are already done for you that you can analyze and learn from. We have 70 plus new drum machine designer kits. Fantastic sounds are in there. 1500 new patches, presets. Two new samplers, that's the quick sampler and sampler that's essentially superseded the EXS24. We've got the new step sequencer capabilities, the remix effects plugin, which is great, and of course the new drum synth software instrument. So there's a lot to cover, let's get right into it. My first recommendation is that if you're currently on Mojave or High Sierra, you don't have to go all the way up to 10.15 to use Logic 10.5. You can stay on 10.14.6. And if you don't know how to get there, go into your system preferences and you'll see that the OS is telling me it recommends that I load Catalina. This is not something I want to do from my previous experience. I know that it's good to at least keep the next upgrade at bay for anywhere from six months to a year just to make sure you have plug-in compatibility. You don't have any problems with your computer and so what you could do is right here at the bottom just go to more info and there you'll find the upgrade that you're looking for my next recommendation is that you go ahead and disable automatically keep my Mac up to date you can also disable the features here because if you don't and you've got your setup connected to Wi-Fi or the internet what's going to happen is that the operating system is going to make the decision for you and it's going to update for you by itself. So if you do not want that kind of trouble, go ahead and disable those features. My recommendation is that when you're learning live loops that you do not use the empty project. I know this is the traditional way of doing things, but if you're really going to improve this new feature, go ahead and choose live loops. I've already created a session. Bear in mind, this is not an independent screen. This is still working in conjunction with the tracks area, except I'm just isolating and working in this alternate workspace. So I'm gonna go ahead and trigger this region. Notice that its behavior is determined by the quantize start indicator right here on the right hand side. How the cell plays back is determined by the quantize start menu here. So there's a difference between triggering a region and triggering a scene. So if I bring in another track and I want to trigger these both simultaneously at the same time, I would trigger them here. These are my various scenes. Think of these like your intro, your verses, your choruses. So let's go ahead and trigger both of these scenes. Let's say I want to go ahead and duplicate these because I want to just develop the idea. So I can go ahead and hit copy C, copy V. That's one way. You can select both of these, make sure they're in focus, hold option, drag them over. That would be another way. You can also go to the scene trigger and just duplicate and achieve the same results. So let's say on the second one, I wanted to go up an octave. While well, I make sure it's selected, I go into the cell inspector and inside of transpose, go all the way up 12 semitones and now we have this. I'll look for something else now. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and add some percussion. I'm 
gonna go ahead and bring in a melodic line. Now this is MIDI. Not only can we use audio loops, we can use MIDI loops. We can also use drummer loops and then now the new feature pattern loops, which we'll get into in a second. Let's go ahead and hear this. I'm gonna trigger everything all together. But notice that these cells are currently active. I'm gonna stop them by hitting Command Return. So now everything has been stopped and I'm gonna go ahead and trigger everything all at once. Okay, let's say we wanted to increase the speed of this. I'm gonna control click, go to playback, go to speed, and let's try double time. Okay, I'll try the same idea, except this time I'll try reversing it. See what happens. All right, I'm just curious what it would sound like if I went back to its original speed. Now it's playing back. Now bear in mind, this is something you can't do in the tracks area. We all know we can reverse audio in the tracks area, but you cannot reverse MIDI until now. Right, I'll return that back to normal. And let's say you wanted this to just play out once and not loop. You'll notice the behavior of the illustration on the region itself changes. See, if I hit L, it goes into that circular motion, and you can see all the MIDI notes laid out. Same goes for the audio regions and the audio transient patterns. And so if I hit L one time, that becomes now linear left to right, and that specific part will play just one time so this would be a one shot take a listen Okay, so that's all easy enough. Anybody can just drag in loops, that's fine. What if you wanted to use a drummer? I'm gonna go ahead and open up a drummer track. Option, Command, N, bring in a drummer. Let's go electronic, I'll tap in Create. And the functionality from the past still rings true today. You can just go ahead and hit that plus symbol. You can play with the hockey puck. You can you know, bring things in, bring things out. I'm just gonna use their kick. Maybe I'll just bring in some of these hi-hats and cymbals, and let's see what happens. Notice I press play. The first three regions are activated, but the green MIDI region and the drummer loop are not. That's why you have to learn how to trigger the scene and stop the cell. So let me go ahead and stop the cells first by hitting Command Return. I've now stopped all activity there. I'm going to go into the scene. I'm going to cue it and then I'll press spacebar. And that is one way to go ahead and get playback from everything all at once without having to trigger the scene. Not only can you use audio, MIDI, drummer, we're also going to use a pattern loop. So I'm going to go ahead, bring that up, something that is a bit higher pitched. All right, so this is interesting. I'm going to go ahead and trigger the scene and audition the loop inside of the loop browser. Here we go. I'm going to drag this into its own unique spot at the very bottom because we're looking to work with the pattern loops now. So I'm going to hit Command, Return, stop all the cells from working, and trigger the scene. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this entire scene right here. Duplicate. I'm going to go ahead and transpose this so it plays up an octave the second time around.
All right, so here it is. And the great thing about this new pattern loop is that you can use the step sequencer and there's a lot of great features here. You know, you could play in different notes. If you do not want to hear those notes while you're inputting them, you can just go ahead and turn off the MIDI out button. And so let me just audition a couple more. Let's see what this sounds like. I'm going to go ahead and stop all the triggers and then just play this one back. Alright, I'd love to tie these notes together. The thing is, in the step sequencer, you can't really drag and move to the right. So I'm just going to click right here. And then inside of the step sequencer options, I'm going to go into tie. Then I will create a long note there at the very end. So bear in mind, you're going to have to move between step on and off to input notes or erase them. And then this menu in order to create changes within the octave, um, you know, gating the note. You're going to have to go back and forth between this menu and this menu if you want to add some other features. So here, let's press play here. And now I'm going to disable the cycle region and start to move some of this content over into the tracks area. Now the one thing that you have to pay attention to that will be a point of frustration for a lot of you is the middle of the screen. This right here is called the divider column and it essentially dictates who is going to play what. So this right here is the track activator button similar to Ableton. If I click this once and it's on the left, all the information on the left in the live loops grid will be playing. If I click one time here, everything in the tracks area will be playing. You can also have it so that some information is playing from the live loops grid and some information is playing inside of the tracks area. So I'm going to go ahead and drag all this information into the tracks area. All right, so notice that I dragged everything over. And so the track activation button is facing the right hand side. And so now we'll hear the content inside of the tracks area. If I wanted to go back and experiment inside of the live loops grid, you want to click right here. And now you're back in live loops mode. So I can trigger scenes. So that's what I'm looking to convey here is the relationship between the track indicator, the live loops grid, and the tracks area. Let's say I wanted to have a hybrid workflow where we have a little bit of stuff working in the live loops grid and some stuff working in the workspace here. If I click on this button right here, you'll notice that track number three is now muted in the tracks area, but is active inside of the live loops grid. So let me go ahead, hit Command A in the tracks area, hit Command U to create a cycle region. Let's see what happens. I'm going to play this information from here, but I'll play the bass inside of the loop grid. Here we go. So it just becomes a really cool and interesting way to experiment, have fun, try things out. I think this is going to be a blast for a lot of people. I do think there's a bit of a learning curve and there is a relationship to understand between the playhead, the tracks area, live loops grid, the divider column, and the track activation button. But once you get all of that out of the way, you're going to make fantastic music and you're going to have a lot of fun while doing so. Go ahead and get a feel for the program and I know you're going to love it too. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.